All right. So how did I go from a 33% on my step one, on my first practice test on step one, to a 71% within a span of four months? So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Um, so I am doing the interview with myself, if you haven't noticed. Um, I'm in the car driving and yeah. So here's how I did it. I know a lot of guys out there that are gonna be watching this. You guys are probably in the same boat as me probably an average med student if not below you know I was in the breast but I still got the job done and you too can do the job it's literally about the right resources you're using and the right methods that work for your type of study and so what do I mean by this so when I took my first practice test for step one I got 33% right that 33% I didn't know so much of the content but the main thing I realized when I was taking that test, I had no clue what the drugs were. I had no clue what the um, microbiology was. I had no answers for those questions at all. So I started diving deep. I was like, wait, if I just did that, I increased my score by a lot. And then obviously on the general systems, I just wasn't as prepared as well. You know, cardiology, pulmonology, immunology, all those, I wasn't that well prepared. Um, but another big hitter for me was biochem. I was terrible in biochem in undergrad and at the beginning of med school. And again, um, I thought that was one of the biggest points that I could do better on. So biochem, micro, and farm. Those are the biggest three things that I learned from that test that I need to improve on. I talked to some people, I got some tips. I was like, I need to watch sketchy every single day. And that's what I started doing. I started watching a couple of micro videos, a couple of drug videos, and I did that every single day, um, actually leading up till the day before the real exam. So yeah, there was a lot of videos, um, and I watched uh, about four sketchy videos a day. Um, I started in around January of 2024, or 2023, sorry. Um, and April of 2023, I watched every single day a sketchy video. Um, and for those of you who don't know, Sketchy is like an, a unique resource. It's basically a bunch of cartoons, but these cartoons really are shown in a way where you like know what, like, like for example, they'll show a picture of like Star Wars or something, and they'll help you memorize like penicillins um, and like the description of penicillins, what they have, what they do. It's super cool um, and it really helps. But the catch is just watching sketchy once is not enough. You gotta revisit those pictures. And to do that, Anki really helps. And Anki specifically, the LOL Nicopinic deck, um, it's in the Anki deck already, but if you're doing other decks, um, the LOL Nicopinic deck is the add-on you wanna do. Um, it really reinforces those sketchies. Like for each sketchy, there's about 10, 15. Some have even up to 100 cards per video. Yeah, it's a lot. But doing those sketch um, Anki cards for those sketchy right after watching the video, it really, really helps. Um, really reinforces all the material. Um, so that's what I started doing for the micro, for the drugs, every single day. In terms of my biochem, that was another heavy hitter. Biochem, I realized, okay, I need to relearn this, but I need to master it in a way where it's not as, you know, as hard for me to understand. Because the way I was taught was pretty bad so what I did was I started watching Dirty Medicine YouTube channel Dirty Medicine YouTube channel has a bunch of uh, biochem he has a series it's like 31 32 videos um, they're about 30 minutes long each the videos and I would watch one video a day and that would really help reinforce those biochem pathways and he had lots of mnemonics that really helped understand the biochem um, and some of those mnemonics I had to rewatch relearn but they were really, really helpful. I took notes, so I went back and reviewed those notes. Um, so again, those are the top three things that improved my score immediately. I went up about 20% just doing those three things. I went from the 30s to the 50s. I mean, obviously over a few practice tests, it wasn't instantly, it wasn't over instantly in like a week or two. It took about a month and a half to get to those 50s. And once I was at the 50s, you know, I was pretty stuck. I mean, I've been covering these drugs. I still have a lot to cover, a lot of micro to cover, but I need a basics. I need better basics on the other stuff. 
um, like the cardio, the pathology of the rest of the organ systems. So I decided I don't want to do Boys and Beyond because I fall asleep with the guy. No offense to him, he's a really great teacher. But for me, he was just not the right guy. He, his voice was too monotone for me. So I went with Pathoma. Um, Pathoma always got me engaged. So what I did, I watched every single Pathoma video. There's 19 chapters, about five to six videos each, each video being around 20 minutes long. Um, and that's what I did. I went through each one. Um, it's really heavily emphasized that the first three chapters of Pathoma are the most important. And um, so I went back and watched those again. But anyways, back to the point, I watched every single video, took notes, had an organized system where if we're on the renal system, I'll take all the renal system notes on a separate um, area of the document. Same for cardiology, GI, you know, for all these um, organ systems. I had notes for them and I would review them. I would review these notes plus the um, biochem dirty medicine notes. At least once a week, I'd try to run through all these notes, you know, um, help reinforce. I'm not someone great with memory at all. I'm actually pretty bad with memory stuff. Um, so reviewing these notes, putting them back in my head, really, really helped. It really helped bring in a lot of the content to my mind. Um, and it was something that I was like, okay, this is gonna be key for me to remember on test day because I used to take practice tests almost every week. So I reviewed the notes like the night before a practice test. So everything was really fresh. And every practice test, I was like, all right, I'm refreshed on everything I learned the past couple of times. Um, and so I was doing that. Um, and then on top of that, I was like, my, I mean, keep in mind, I have one of the worst memories out there. So this might not be, you know, this might be extreme for a lot of people, but I was like, this isn't enough for me to remember the pathology. I need to do Anki on top of this. And I didn't keep up with Anki. I wasn't those smart med students who made that smart decision. I didn't do that. Um, so I was like, I'm no way I'm doing 30,000 cards in a couple of months. Um, so I found this other deck called the Duke deck. Um, the Duke deck follows very, very closely with the Pathoma series. It's literally made for the Pathoma series. And it literally covers all the pathological content that's covered in Pathoma. So, um, and so I did those cards. There's about, I think, 1900 cards, I would like to say. Um, 1900 cards in a couple months, that's not bad at all. And that really, really improved my knowledge on those pathological things, really saw improvements. Honestly, that's what brought me, that combination really ended up bringing me up to the, um, the 60s. That really brought me to the 60s. Um, and so at that point I had a C, uh, CC, CSS, I forgot what it's called, CSSA, something like that, uh, where it's a practice test that we have to pass at our school before taking the actual exam. And, you know, I passed that one, uh, but I give credit to passing that to, again, learning the big three weaknesses for me. Biochem, uh, micro, drugs, big three, plus reinforcing my pathology on especially those organ systems I totally forgot since first year. That really, really, really helped. Um, and then going forward, I was like, okay, I passed it, but my exam is still in a couple weeks and I barely passed that CSSA, whatever it was. And so I was barely passing. I was like, wow, I really have to study to make sure I can be safely passing. So what did I do? I just kept refining all the stuff, you know, did the basics, your world practice tests. Uh, but big thing I did, did on those was I had an organized system of notes, uh, whether that be, um, you could do it on different ways, but I did it on a notes document separated by organ system and wrote down all the corrections for it on stuff I didn't know, stuff I forgot, or stuff I was iffy on. I noted down from your world um, and put out my notes on my iPad. I even took pictures of graphs. Um, I actually made a separate Anki deck of the U world graphs and charts that were totally wild that I would not remember ever. And so I went through that Anki, separate Anki deck every day. And I went through those notes of the U world every week um, in addition to those other notes we mentioned earlier. Um, and that helped really, really reinforce a lot of these concepts, helped me really tailor, tailor my way through and um, reviewed those all the time. And then uh, up in the last week of my prep, I took free 120, you know, I, that was the one I scored 71% on. Um, and that was a buildup of it. I had done so much reviewing, the biggest key thing for me. 
um, hit all my weakest points, refined my other points, and just went in and the day, and like a couple of days before the test, I went through all my notes, reviewed all my notes to refresh my memory, um, cut back on the questions, cut back on the Anki just a day or two before, um, and focused on just gathering knowledge in, and then went on test day and did the job and got it done. So that's kind of the timeline story uh, tips that I used on how to improve and the key takeaways are you got to hit your weakest points. You got to identify your weakest points and hit them hard. And a lot of people don't do reviews. That's a big thing. I know most people have a better memory than I do, but you got to do reviews. That's one of the best ways to make sure the information is stuck in your head and you want it stuck in your head. Um, and that's the only way to really go forward. So hope this helps, um, you know, kind of doing a self interview in the car. Um, it's been a busy week, um, busy timing and stuff, but um, if this does well, then maybe I'll continue doing some car videos. Um, also on top of that, if you have any questions whatsoever um, on studying for step one, complex one, step two, level two, or even if you're an MCAT watcher, um, MCAT taker, um, you can always comment below. You can email us the drjourney21 at gmail.com. Uh, we're going to have a new email soon, but anyways, that's our email for now. Uh, we do help. We help make schedules. We help do tutoring, all that stuff. But if you just have any questions in general, feel free to um, ask. I'll be happy to answer. Uh, but yeah, wishing you guys the best. Um, I hope this kind of shows that anyone can do this. Um, I am by no means a smart med student at all. I would say I'm probably even below average. Um, so yeah, this is going to be very doable. It's a very doable task. Hit your weak points, keep reviewing, and you'll be good. So thank you guys for watching, and we'll have a new episode next week. We'll have some guests coming on, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.